Hi, everyone, and welcome to our What's New for 2022 at SIG. My name is Caroline Daniel, and I'm the Director of Academics for SIG. And joining me, uh, we have... Hi, I'm Hallie Hoot. I'm the Director of Client Services here. And we both are so excited to uh, come here today and share some information with you and really kick off the 2022 SIG season this year. Um, we have lots of great information for everybody. Um, this recording, uh, this webinar is going to be recorded. So just wanted to share that and all the recordings will be shared with the participants or the registrants for today. Um, we also do have a chat. So if you have any questions in between, just feel free to post it on the chat. chat. And we have our team members, Susan Cornick and Nicole Wolf also on the line to answer any questions and we will also have a Q&A session at the end. So let's get started. Awesome, I'm gonna turn my video off We can so it's not distracting, but we're super excited, as Caroline mentioned, to have you here today. Your participation today indicates that you're interested in your child's education and academic exploration, and so are we. SIG and our parent company, Summer Discovery, are focused solely on enabling and empowering gifted, academically talented, and creative youth to maximize their unique potential. We do this through various summer pre-college opportunities and academic programming for high potential youth. The mission of the Summer Institute for the Gifted is to provide the highest quality of educational and social opportunities for high potential youth through programs designed to meet their abilities and needs. Throughout this presentation, we're gonna highlight some of how our summer programs emulate our mission. We are focused on enriching minds where creativity thrives and committed to having students find their paths towards self-discovery and empowerment. Let's take a look, a closer look at what the SIG programs will look like for your child in the summer of 2022. So one of the main distinguishing features of SIG is its unique set of courses that are offered from year to year. And each year, SIG provides innovative courses that reflect a wide range of STEAM plus disciplines, such as science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, humanities, and fitness. The innovative courses that SIG provides are really there to promote intellectual engagement through multidisciplinary studies, and they utilize the principles of a problem-based learning approach. So the academic day for students in across all programs, that would be elementary, middle, and high school, consists of two periods. And this means that students choose an AM course and a PM course and each course is approximately about three hours. During this instructional time, students are engaged in a variety of tasks and activities and learning opportunities that really help them internalize the course objectives and their own personal objective within the course, which is really a unique feature of SIG. The SIG classroom experience is one that is really robust with exciting instructional activities and really these can range from collaboratively working with like-minded work groups, taking part in open-ended discussions or Socratic seminars, engaging in creative problem-solving processes, debates and reflections, working independently on readings or pre-assessment tasks, problem-solving with their course instructors through personal conferences and guided independent studies, they get to hypothesize, experiment, and test ideas. And then finally, what really culminates all that learning is that they focus on research and development toward a culminating product in the course. And that merges what they've learned new in the course along with their own personal interest that they bring and create novel solutions or products in the field. So one thing that we want to highlight about SIG courses is not only does it focus that STEAM plus curriculum, but it is inquiry based, where students are really guiding their learning through questioning that is facilitated by the instructor. And it is also very investigative, where they learn both through a minds on and a hands on approach to grow intellectually and meet their social and emotional needs, even within the academic day. And then finally, it's very innovative because a lot of the core subjects that we have 
are really very cutting edge topics and different disciplines. And it also helps them move into creative thinking skills to help them really tackle unanswered questions, not just to learn more, but to do something with it, to be producers of knowledge in their quest of learning. Also this year, students are grouped by grade level bands that reflect the grade that they have completed at the time of summer 2022. Based on their completed grade level, students select courses within those grade level bands of kindergarten through second grade, third grade through fifth grade, sixth grade through eighth grade, and ninth through twelfth grade. Our courses are designed and developed based on a range of the gifted and high achieving academic readiness and abilities. Enrollment based on completed grade bands also accommodate students who have experienced accelerated educational settings beyond just their chronological age, and it allows our staff to focus more on your students' key developmental stages. So in 2022, we are so excited to offer 30 plus courses across elementary, middle and high school programs. And these innovative courses, they really do promote that intellectual growth for students, like I mentioned, through multidisciplinaries and a problem based learning approach. One thing that is very unique of SIG courses is that it does offer students academic freedom that may be unavailable in other type of educational settings during the year for them. And they are allowed and given plenty of opportunities to build relationships with like-minded peers. Additionally, SIG Innovative Courses provide students the ability to explore their personal passions and apply that creative thought to innovative products and solutions. If you look here at the SIG Elementary grade band level, you have six courses. And also with the third through fifth grade level band, you have another six courses. They range from courses that are new, brand new to SEG for 2022, some that are backed by popular demand because of a, a large student interest, and then those that just come back from year to year because they are staples. If you look at the K2 grade band, we are we have six, all of them are all new, and we have a robotics course called Coding Wizards. We have an engineering course called Tinkering Engineers, an arts course, Dramatic Play Studio, two science courses, Geology Rocks and the Mason Jar Science Lab. And then we have a math course, um, Perfectly Puzzling Math, Logic and Brain Teasers. And then likewise, if you look for the elementary third through fifth, you have um, two science courses, catapults to curveballs, the physics of projectile motion, and you have chemistry, the essential element. We also have an engineering course, engineering your future, a math course, magicians mathematics, that's a new course for 2022, playwriting, oh, the drama, which is our arts course that is backed by popular demand, and our new robotics course, programming and robotics. And so students in element, in the elementary and uh, the, the full K-5 band really have a wide variety and they really can make those decisions on what their interests are uh, when they select for a SIG program. If you look here, we have our course offerings for the middle and high school programs. Here, there are 10 courses for each, for each grade band. Again, students are going to choose an AM um, course in the morning and a PM course in the afternoon. Students who have completed grades six through eight can choose from robotics, um, creative engineering uh, and robotics. It's a new course that we have this year. We also have a new public speaking course called the Eloquent Order, Leave Them Speechless. We also have um, a bit of a multidisciplinary courses with the climate change crisis, advocate action. We have smart cities, reimagining urban infrastructures. Um, that's new as well. Some of these, I'm sorry, maybe the, the icons have kind of missed around, messed around a little bit, but we have our math course, discrete mathematics, a new strength and conditioning fitness course, we have producing a short film that has come year to year, very popular with students. And then we also have two more science courses, theories of time travel and synaptic plasticity. So such a great uh, lineup for middle school students. And then on the high school end, 
We do have um, some new courses that I just want to highlight. The biotechnology engineering course, the AI robotics um, is going to be really exciting. We have cancel culture, green technologies, um, and then we have strength and conditioning as well. And then we do have a course that's coming back, um, mental health. We're really excited about that, um, especially with a lot of things that are going on in the news. So we have such a great lineup for um, the middle and high school students. Next, I just want to take a look and explore all of the SIG program locations for 2022. So exciting that to date we'll have 12 locations and over 20 plus programs and sessions. These hosting institutions include Bryn Mawr College, which many of you might be familiar with, Boston University Academy, Emory University, Fairfield University, Montclair State University, Stewart Country Day School, UCLA, UC Berkeley, University of Miami, University of Michigan, and Yale University. SIG elementary programs are for students who have completed kindergarten through fifth grade. SIG middle school programs are for students who have completed sixth grade through eighth grade. And SIG high school programs are for students who have completed grades nine to 12 prior to the summer of enrollment in a SIG program. Really exciting to highlight that uh, a new location at the University of Michigan, and it will have both a two and a three week SIG middle and high school program. So lots of great offerings, something for everyone, different locations across the, the US. So very excited to have everyone back in person on campus with us. One thing that is really exciting and a great academic feature for 2022 are going to be the academic evening workshops. We, these workshops are gonna take place in the evening hours and are included in the residential middle and high school SIG experience. Students will have a choice of four workshops to choose from and will remain with the selected workshop for the duration of the program. The choices include Clifton Strengths: Unlock Your Potential and Thrive, Examining Scholarly Articles, Debate and Discourse, The Art of Critical Reading in Communities, and civics and service make your mark. The goal of academic evening workshops is to really prepare students to succeed in the 21st century world. These workshop options provide development in interdisciplinary and integrative skills. Students develop various ways of knowing that support intellectual pursuits and enhance one's skill for academic, career, and civic responsibilities in and to the world. So we are very excited for this new um, workshop feature um, for 2022. So if you think about all these things, and if you've been with SIG um, in the past, we really have these five areas that really can make the significant difference in programming. And we like to call it the significant difference as well, because it's very unique to SIG. So first, it's our innovative courses that we talked about. It is a SIG hallmark. Our unique SIG courses really develop critical, complex, and creative thinking skills over such a vast amount of innovative courses. Students have access to a wide range of disciplines, allowing students to enhance their existing talents while occur acquiring new ones. And courses provide intellectual engagement through we mentioned that multidisciplinary approach and they utilize the principles of problem-based learning. Next, if you see in orange, you have what we are also known for, which is programming for the whole person. SIG programs are not just academic in nature. We really do also provide lots of opportunities for our students to cultivate their social development through various evening, weekend, and recreational opportunities. Programs are designed to enhance students' natural talents and abilities while fostering an accepting and safe social experience. Next, if you see in green, we are also known for our prestigious locations and universities that we're hosted at. Although SIG programs are not affiliated to the university or college location, it provides students the excitement of campus life while being part of a well-staffed and supervised program. Another significant aspect of our programming is that we have a diverse student body. 
SIG welcomes all gifted, academically talented, and creative students from across cultures and countries to provide the diversity of thought and culture. The student body is typically composed of 85% from the US and 15% from international students and countries. And including the US, the top 10 countries represented are China, South Korea, Russia, Hong Kong, India, Singapore, um, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Canada. And then the final significant difference is that our qualified and dedicated academic staff uh, that SIG selects for programs really are trained in either their K-12 educators, um, trained in gifted and talented pedagogy and practice, or their professionals in the field, or their instructors from university or college institutions. We have a very high returning rate of academic staff that really look forward every year to coming back and supporting SIG programs and continuing to build and facilitate our academic community. Great. Next, let's get acquainted with SIG's eligibility options for admissions. I see a lot of familiar faces and names here, not faces, but names of some of our alumni. So many of this, many of you are familiar with this, but SIG has three primary pathways or routes to choose from um, just to meet those eligibility requirements to be a part of the program. The first path is through test scores. Students can provide documentation that demonstrates scores at the 95th percentile on the Accepted Achievement or Ability Nationally Norm Test, and a list of those is available on our website. Another eligibility path is that of an educator or parent recommendation. The option requires two recommendations from an educator and a parent, or a combination of both, from two from an educator or two from a combination of the educator and parent using the recommendation forms provided through the SIG division. The last eligibility path acknowledges current enrollment in a gifted program or gifted school um, or previous participation in a talent search or comparable alternative gifted summer program. Again, only one of these three eligibility options needs to be met to be accepted and to enroll in the program. And all of that is also explained on our website and we're happy to, to help in the process if you do have questions. Just like to touch here too, if you're currently located internationally and interested in a SIG program, there is an added tier to the eligibility. International students need to meet domestic eligibility requirements first, so those one of those three options that I just discussed, and they need to demonstrate uh, English proficiency. As you can see here, there are several options for determining that English proficiency. Um, if test scores are unavailable for your student, a Zoom interview may be requested um, just to ascertain English proficiency and, and make sure that you are eligible. Again, you're always welcome to reach out to the admissions committee with any questions around, el surrounding eligibility or those English proficiency standards. Last but not least, really exciting. Many of you may have already heard, we're offering some really great benefits and savings this fall. Um, so this, we do have a fall savings going on currently for students who apply for a program and enroll before November 1st. They will receive $300 off a residential program, $200 off a full day commuter program, or $100 off a half day commuter program. In addition to that, we do have some alumni perks. So if you're a, a SIG alumni, um, students will receive an additional $300 off residential programs, $200 off full day commuter programs, $100 off half day commuter programs, and a waived application fee. So that's really great. We try to are trying to expedite the process. So you should just be able to, to log in there, um, create an account, and it will provide you with an expedited application. With that, we also have risk-free enrollment. You can cancel for any reason, no questions asked, and receive a full refund, just less that application fee prior to February 1st, 2022. Now we're at the end of our webinar, and I am really excited to open this up to, to q and I do see some questions coming through here. Caroline and I are both excited to, to engage and answer any questions that you might have. Um, if we don't get all of your get to all of your questions again we'll get back to you directly via email um, or you're welcome to call our office as well here that phone line is there so if you need some help or support more than happy to give you that directly as well so i do see some questions here um, we'll get started um, my son will be interested in several courses for his grade level band how do you recommend that we make those course selections 
No, that's a great question, um, Holly, that you've um, shared here. So there is such a great variety and it's really hard to choose sometimes. And so what we recommend families doing is really looking at what your child is most interested in. It is their summer. They really do want to have fun, um, but at the same time, they're very interested in, in learning things, their own question and interest. So select courses that they're really going to be engaged in for three weeks or two weeks um, that it won't even feel like, you know, they're learning as much as that they're really just experiencing and exploring their passions. Great. I do see another one here that I'm sure um, is common. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the rationale from dropping from four courses to two courses? Sure, we actually did some extensive surveying on our families and um, based on parent feedback, uh, it was a preference to go to two. So we really wanted to uh, take that into account. The other thing we really are looking at our academic program programming and wanting to um, really build that depth and complexity with each of the content. Sometimes when you have um, you know, four different courses, you really just do a survey. You don't really get to dive deep, which a lot of our students are wanting to do and, and, and also need based on their interests. So just with a variety of different reasons, we have moved to two and we're really excited to just have such a robust um, span of instructional time for our students this next summer. Definitely really exciting. Um, kind of along that those lines too, I do see a question here. Um, a parent says, I have a huge range, there's a huge range of learning and maturity between students who have completed kindergarten and those who have completed second grade. How would you manage that if, if those students are all grouped in a single class? So that's kind of related to that. Yeah, sure. No, that's great. And we, in looking at those um, grade level bands, we're looking at similar gifted students and high functioning students that are really like-minded. And although they have different grade levels in between, we really take into account first by doing a pre-assessment when they come into the course on days one and two, just to find out where they are. In some cases, you'll have a kindergartner who is working at a second grade level or a second grade, or in some cases, a second grade working just a little bit over what they're usually um, chronologically uh, with their peers. So we really take into account and we differentiate the content. So all of the course material is designed for that band's readiness and abilities, really taking into account the spectrum that they will have for gifted students. So traditionally they may be compared to their chronological peers um, intellectually, but here you're bringing like-minded peers. And so they're really working um, together with the same type of readiness, with the same type of motivation and aspects. So there's just so much built in and all those courses are gonna be designed accordingly. That's great. Uh, another one here is, I'm interested in your program at Yale University, but not sure if my child is a good fit for your program. I see that your program is for gifted students and my child is a strong academic student, but not identified as gifted. Sure, and that's completely okay. What we're looking for is, uh, you know, either you're identified gifted or you're academically talented and or if you're a creative student. And one aspect of our eligibility route is the two recommendations aspect. So if you uh, can get two recommendations um, using our recommendation forms in our application, uh, that will suffice. And this year we've also added one educator or one parent. So you can either go either or if you want to get two recommendations from a teacher or if you want to do one and then also include one parent because we really do value that qualitative data from our um, from our community and I think it's so important when you're trying to find the right academic programming for students. Definitely. And this one sounds like a more logistic question, which I do see some more logistical questions in here, which we're happy to get back with those in more detail. But for elementary programs, are morning camp staff and after, afternoon camp staff the same? Yes, they are. They're there for the full program. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you're coming in half day in the a.m. or half day in the p.m. Um, and lunch is included on both half day uh, program sessions. Perfect. For the application process, how do you consider a gifted school and what about COVID affecting standardized tests? So with 
with a gifted school, so if you're currently enrolled in a, in a school that is identified as a gifted school, that can serve as eligibility. Um, the other piece is if you are part of a gifted program within like your public school district, um, you've gone through eligibility requirements at the district level for that, whatever um, requirements they have there. And so we would just need to have documentation that they're currently participating in that program. In terms of COVID affecting different standardized tests, that's why we have multiple uh, eligibility routes, because we do know not every child that is attending SIG is just a fantastic off the charts test taker. Um, and that doesn't really speak to their potentiality either. So we do offer that two recommendations route, um, either from a parent and educator or two educators. Great. Um, and then another question about, can you provide some basic descriptions of the teacher qualifications? I know we have some amazing staff and, and supporters of SIG that. Right, now all of our staff are really going through a selective process um, from our staffing team and also our academic team. And most of them are K-12 educators who are trained in gifted education, pedagogy and practice. That is a very important piece to serving our students in classrooms. And then specifically to maybe specific science topics or math topics or technology topics, we sometimes also get professionals in the field where that experience is so important to that class, but they also will be trained in you know, the instructional practices that are the right fit and best practice for students. So they just really range a, a wide variety of backgrounds, but they all come with that same consistent um, element of implementation for programming across all our programs. Great. And then another question that's kind of related to that, how many students are in each grade band and what does that student to staff teacher ratio look like? Sure. We, uh, we're looking, it's, it's really based on classroom capacity at any given location, but we're looking at, you know, I would say about 15 to 20 students in a in a course just based on the popularity of the course and then if if it tends to be very popular we do open up a second section so that the class sizes are not um, too large but it really just is based on the popularity and also the availability of the capacity of the classrooms on the on the campus great i do see um some questions here evolving around the activities the students do. Uh, some questions about are the students free on weekends or, or how does that structure look like outside of the classroom time? Sure, if you're in a residential program uh, and you're a residential student, we do have evening activities. Usually after the academic day it ends about 4.30, there is something called a recreational hour. And that's just a little bit more of a, like a potpourri of different activities that is by choice, that is set by the staff and after that they have dinner and they have the academic evening workshops and then they have evening activities that are planned again so it's very robust every essentially every hour is planned out um so there is never going to be a time that is you know unstructured where they there is some time there's some dorm time and things like that and then in the weekends there there will be some aspect of weekend trips that will be planned and you know more information of that will be available on the website great um how do high school students or any students receive do they get any credit for their courses and what kind of course completion documentation is provided no that's a really great question so all our programs elementary middle and high they are not for credit they truly are enrichment courses really to just help students just continue their passions and growth in areas of interest at the end of every program we do offer something called a student performance reviews and they are qualitative narratives from the instructor that provides um, information about their achievements and contributions in the course and um, you know areas for future growth so it's something that's a, a coveted piece that you know parents really look forward to and you do get that for every course um, so the am course and the pm course and additionally you'll get a certificate of completion from sig awesome I'm just taking a peek through here again 
Uh, I do see a question here, and we did touch on it a little bit earlier, but in case we have some others tuning in, students with differentiated curriculum that are, are they allowed to take courses outside of their grade band? So I know that'll be a common question I'm sure that we get, we've got a wide range of students. I know you addressed it a little bit earlier, but could you just speak to that one more time? Yeah, sure. So uh, for 2022, we really have moved into these grade bands and in order for, in order to take part of those courses, you would have to have completed the grade in order to move into that grade band. So we do, uh, we do really implement that idea of differentiated instruction and curriculum within any grade band. So no matter where their skill set is, we do pre-assess them. That data is then implemented by the academic dean and the instructor to really provide this robust curriculum. There's flexible grouping in the classroom, so students are peered with like-minded peers. They're not peer tutoring someone else that may not be at their level, which sometimes occurs in mainstream um, educational settings for high functioning students. So we we know what's best for students and we really implement that type of pedagogy in the classroom. So no matter where they are, a lot of our, like especially our math courses, sometimes a lot of students are um, instructionally maybe one or two grade levels ahead. That is all accounted for in the curriculum. They are very much mathematical reasoning and logical reasoning type of courses so that computational aspect is already configured into that and we're really moving into application of these concepts and that variety is so important in the classroom definitely um, I do see some concern or some parents, which I'm sure you're all in the in the same boat, but um, my 12 year old will be away from home for the first time. What are visiting hours like? Um, are they allowed to bring phones? How is it regulated? Um, I'm sure we have some some first timers here, too. Yeah, and I think, you know, at first, especially, you know, if you're, you know, 10, 11, 12, you know, wherever your student is completing sixth grade and they're moving into a residential program, that's always um, just a just a hesitation or just an anxiety initially, but just want you to know that our staff is just really so accommodating and welcoming of students, and there is a lot of communication that goes out ahead of the programs from our operations team um, with different things, so just ways to handle what to pack, things like that. So a lot of that usually comes in the spring, um, and they really guide you that process. Um, Hallie and the whole client services team really is there to help you minimize a lot of those um, areas of um, anxiety. So there's a lot forthcoming as we move into the summer. Definitely, and we definitely want to help you along in the process and, and getting excited and getting your students excited, more importantly. So any questions that you do have, are, we're always happy to, to help with that. Just going to take one last look here. Um, otherwise, we'll ha be happy to follow up directly if you did ask a question that we were unable to get to. Um, just see if there's any other ones that would be relevant to the whole group. I do see um, a question here about kind of the rooming and, and how we room students and, and what that looks like for our residential students and kind of room time and that kind of end of the day schedule. Yeah, and those are really great questions for once you are accepted and enrolled, um, you'll have a client service um, specialist assigned to you. Those are really great questions for them. It really varies by program. So if it's a, it's very program specific. So I just recommend that once you, your application's in route and enrolled, you know, you really do have someone that is going to be with you through the whole process until the summer. Definitely. And if you do have questions about which program location might be the right fit, uh, course questions, things along those lines, um, again, give us a call. We're happy to, to walk you through different options and, and find the best fit for your student this summer. I do see a question here about courses across campuses. Are they similar across all campuses for those grade bands or, or what does that look like? Yeah, that's a perfect question. We, um, all of those courses that you saw there today are across all programs. So especially for the elementary programs, you really will see all those courses. There are six, you'll have three choices in the morning and three choices in the afternoon. So you would just select one um, for an AM and a PM. For the middle school and high school programs and those course selections that you saw today, um, they will, vary by program. So some of our larger programs will have all of those courses and then 
accordingly by, you know, by our enrollment, we have different program schedules. So um, check out the program that you're interested in um, on our website and you'll see the course schedule there. Wonderful. I think that wraps it up. I see a lot of chatter going on in here with our associates, Nicole and Susan. So I am just going to leave that questions box open, but want to thank you so much for joining us. We're certainly excited for 2022, as I know many of you and your students are as well. So please give us a call. Really excited about these savings and discounts we have going on through November 1st. I'll put that slide back up. Uh, more importantly, thank you so much for joining us and taking some time out of the day to, to meet with us. Hope you thank have a wonderful rest of your week. Yep. We're looking forward to seeing you next summer.